remain standing and join us in the pledge. I would appreciate it. Let's bow together. Father, we glorify your name. Thank you for this day, for this gathering, for the opportunities before us. And we ask that you guide and direct us in all that is said and done in this meeting. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Let's pledge to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do uh, welcome you to the commission meeting. Thank you for your interest in the uh, business of our county and the commission. We have no scheduled public hearings, no public comment from citizens scheduled, and no awards and presentations, but we do have some elected officials here. We'll uh, invite them if they want to address the commission and the, and the group gathered. This will be an appropriate time. Judge, do you have anything today? Not today. All right. Sheriff, anything uh, now or later? Later. All right. Thank both of you for being here. Uh, Chuck Patterson called and had a, an appointment in another town, so he was unable to join us today, but he expressed regrets. Uh, the consent agenda items uh, include the March 22nd minutes, commissioners, and also accounts payable and payroll for the month of March. You've, I'm sure, by now had a chance to review those, and I'll ask if there are any corrections to note, or if there's a motion to approve as presented. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion and second. Anybody have anything to note or a correction to note? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, the items under the consent agenda are approved. Uh, we carried nothing forward under old business for this meeting, so let's move on to new business. Consider board appointment for organized community action program. We know it is OCAP. Their offices are located in the Covington County Health Department building. And uh, do you know how many board members there are? I'm sorry, I don't recall. I looked the other day, but I don't recall that number. Four or five, probably. Three. There's three. Within According County to the and then back in the back. Yeah. District and uh, we've had one who has resigned from there. So we have an open slot commissioners, and your only notice probably was just it was on the agenda. So we don't have anybody in mind, but we'd like for you to be thinking about it. Now, maybe you have brought a name for consideration. <coughs> We'd certainly entertain that. If not, we. Uh, We'll ask Karen or Rachel to provide information for you to m let, make you fully aware of what it entails and, and then maybe you'll have somebody in your district that you'd like to see step up and serve. So between now and the next meeting, maybe we can fill, uh, find someone to fill that slot. Okay, uh, next item B is uh, the 2022 back to school sales tax holiday. Page 37 in your packet has the particulars on that. And uh, you know that we join with the state, local communities on uh, sponsoring this sales tax holiday as families start back to school. It's probably more important this year than ever before because of the cost of inflation. And uh, the proposed dates are July 15, 16, and 17, which is a weekend. And what are your wishes on Covington County adopting this back to school sales tax holiday? Sure does. All right, so we're going to take that as a motion to approve this. Is there a second? I'll second. You may have questions or comments on it. Other than just do it. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, that's approved. <coughs> Consider funding requests for County County Youth Leadership Program. Just a little bit of background there. Uh, two leadership classes have, uh, or groups, programs have started. In the last 18 months, there's a youth leadership program. The attempt was made right at the very beginning of COVID to get that ball rolling, and COVID slowed that down for two years. They are uh, finishing up the first class at this time. The other one is uh, an adult leadership program, and uh, Tommy McGahey participated in the first class. They are now into their second class. This particular one is the youth leadership program. The schools are all participating. Uh, it, it has... Uh, five or six kids from each school in Covington County, so city schools, county schools, and uh, they are participating in a year-long or nine-month-long program. They've had uh, great experiences from all reports, and 
it's it's low cost, but there is a need for a little bit of money for some transportation and so forth. The schools provide buses and some of the transportation, but uh, if they're going to make a trip to Montgomery, for instance, they may need a little extra money to fund that. So I would like to propose that we ante up a little bit out of our uh, discretionary funds and. Uh, I think the amount I was going to propose was 250. Y'all may remember, is it 200 or 250? Do you remember the amount? 250 a piece, and and if y'all would like, to, if you would like to participate in that, or I'll just ante up the full amount out of the discretionary funds I have left. What are your thoughts on that? Let me mention this. It's it's headed up by uh, Terry Dunn, and there is a good cross section of folks, uh, other youth leaders from across the county that are, are helping to make sure that that's a great experience and a meaningful experience for the kids that do participate, uh, including uh, some of the 4-H leaders and then uh, several from LBW, so they've had good participation and leadership. I think it's a very worthwhile program. So what are, you, what are your thoughts? What would you like to see us do on that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good with using some of my discretionary money. 250 seem reason, and I, and I think there'll be some left over, and it'll carry forward to next year as well. Right. So, okay. Any, anybody else want to ante up some from yours, yeah, or just use agree. use yeah. up mine? I think all of them. Okay. If, if if there's a is there a motion to approve granting those funds out of discretionary <laughs> funds in it to the tune of 250 per person? I'll make a motion. Okay. A second. Questions on that or comments? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Okay. Thank you. We'll get word to Mr. Terry, Dr. Terry Dunn today. Uh, next is consider approval for IAC resolutions. We're going to ask Karen to give us the details on this. Page 38 and 39 in your packet. Okay, you have two resolutions in front of you. The first one is an amendment to the Association of County Commissions of Alabama Investing in Alabama Counties Program Maintenance and Support Membership Agreement. Basically, with a change in the law, they reduce the amount that we actually owe for the use of their services. So this is just accepting that Except lower a, fee. A, re a reduction reduced. in the fee? Right. The second resolution is regarding the election of the standard allowance for revenue replacement from the county's American Rescue Plan Act fiscal recovery funds. This is uh, when they change the law and they allow us to take the standard allowance, lets us free up the money to be used um, as y'all wish versus under the strict guidelines that are replaceable for uh, organizations that receive every penny they need. But we still have to meet certain You still guidelines. have to do guidelines, it's but it's just not as strict as what it was before. It, it will be considered less, as a revenue replacement. Less restricted on how we use it, but still, still very happens. restricted by the law on how we, right. how we approach right. the spending. Uh, so both of these are extremely good things for our, uh, it, it, uh, from our perspective, a lower fee for the administration and uh, lower restrictions on our spending of funds. Let's, let's handle them one, one at a time since it's resolutions. Uh, let's consider resolution 22-04-12-01 uh, on the accepting the lower uh, administrative fee. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? I'll make a motion to adopt it. Motion, Tommy, second by Michael. We'll get that on the books if both of you are interested in it. Any, any questions on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, that motion is adopted. The next is dash 12 dash 02 regarding uh, accepting the, re, uh, the 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 less restrictive uh, guidelines. Revenue uh, replacement. Hmm? Did you use revenue replacement? Revenue replacement. I, I was looking for, for revenue that. replacement. All right, revenue replacement from uh, on uh, on the funds, which makes it easier for us to uh, expend that on purposes that are appropriate and good for the county. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the resolution? Motion. Sure, there's a second. Is there? Yeah, a second. Okay, motion and second. Anybody else have a question for Karen on that particularly? So, Michael, you mentioned the uh, fact we still have restrictions, and just for the general understanding, these are federal funds, so they come restricted by federal law how we can expend them. Of course, we are bound by state law, which is restrictive in different ways than what the federal law is. So if we expend these on a uh, public works type project, then we're going to be bound by probably by both sets of laws, certainly by the state, most likely by the federal as well. And that just dictates how we go about the bidding process and so forth. So we still are restricted on it, just like any other funds the county uh, might choose to 
might choose to spend and actually more so because of the federal connection to it. All right, if there's nothing else, there's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, that carries. Thank you all. Chair, why don't you uh, carry on with the next item, which is transfer of a vehicle uh, between county departments. Okay, um, background on this vehicle, it's a GMC Envoy that we were able to secure from the state EMA office. Susan helped us to get this vehicle at no cost. Uh, it was first used in our in-home service program. And then when Susan was gracious enough to give us her Tahoe from her EMA department uh, to transfer it over, then, um, then we were able to move this vehicle to the maintenance department. And they used it until they recently uh, got their new pickup truck. So now they do not need this vehicle anymore, but we have a need um, to use it at the arena uh, to transport inmates from the jail to the arena for their work. Uh, so we'd like for y'all to consider them using this vehicle uh, for that purpose. So is Susan's used car is on the bid list yeah. or what? That's what I want to know. Okay. Uh, so there's just a request to allow the transfer from one de from one department to the other, from in home to uh, the arena, uh, so that we can get primarily get out of personal vehicles in that transport process. How many how many more lives does that thing have? Has it got another two or three years, maybe? So far, it's been good to us. Okay. Uh, I bet it has a few for miles a vehicle, on it. Yeah. For a vehicle with no cost, uh, other than the normal maintenance and repairs. It may need to send tires. If you choose not to make this transfer, then we need to probably declare it surplus right. and sell it. That's right. But this is a, a, an appropriate use for it. So Karen's requesting that. What year oh. is it? What year? What year? Uh, 2000. Old. Yeah, it's, it's an 2000 old. old. A two, I don't know if it's 2003 for some reason. I don't know. I'll have to look real quick. It was just curiosity. I just has no bearing on my Are you waiting whether to sell it or to transfer? <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal on the how old? It is a Tell 2007 me, GMC Bye. Envoy. Would you like the VIN number? 2007. <laughs> Do you want the VIN number? No, okay. 2007. So uh, it's got it's got a few years of life. I'm I'm impressed you found that. I don't know about y'all. I can't find stuff on my phone. That was impressive. <coughs> so with that in mind, uh, what are your wishes? Is I think it's to my personal. I think it's a good idea that way we don't have an individual using their private vehicle. I know we had a question about the him being insured in this, and I think you answered that yes. Yes, question it, in this. As long as it is at the direction of, of us, um, then they are covered under insurance. Okay. Any other questions, or are we to entertain a motion? I make a motion. All right, motion to make the transfer as requested. Is there a second? hesitate to call for a discussion on it because I don't know if we'll get out of here but is there any discussion comments if not we'll vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign okay carries three to nothing all right next uh, sheriff we're going to call you up the next couple of items I think are directly dealing with your department uh, one is the purchase of a vehicle and the other is a canine request specifically and I think you may have had another item that we failed to get on there so. okay uh we're requesting the purchase out of discretionary funds, a couple of vehicles, uh, four Explorers. We'll be trading two vehicles in on these Explorers. One's a two, uh, 2005 uh, uh, Ford truck that's reached its end of life, and another one is, uh, I think it's a 2016, which has some pretty good miles on it, but right now it's worth a little bit more than what it would be if it was wore out, but they'll actually be replacing these vehicles. Uh, the, 
two you're trading in were dis used uh, purchased with discretionary, discretionary funds, discretionary so that fund, he yeah. has the ability mm -hmm. to do that. Then is there a, a, an estimate of what you think you'll have to pay the difference on the two you're buying? Uh, not yet. We're waiting on. Uh, we're waiting to get for Stivers to get back with us. Okay. Uh, the the vehicles we're looking at are Ford Explorers, and they're going for thirty three thousand one hundred and three dollars. Uh, they do have these in stock, and they also have some F-150 crew cabs in stock. They are $32,415. Uh, I brought those two numbers. We would like to stick with the Explorers because uh, we need the cargo room. I know that there's been a lot of trouble getting vehicles. you think they'll be able to fill the order from what you've checked on? Yes, well, they, they, they have them in stock as of yesterday. Okay. Uh, new vehicles? Or are you talking about brand new? Brand new, uh, and they're from Stivers, which is on state bid. Uh, and we just request that you consider allowing us to purchase that out of discretionary. Uh, what, about, what about the the uh, equipping them? Is that a pretty significant these, cost? Is that something? Well, you these vehicles are actually going to be investigator vehicles. Okay. So the equipment that we put in them, well, it's actually going to be uh, second hand equipment. Now, we've already Transfer. got the equipment. We're Transfer. just going to put it over okay. into the to the to the new vehicle. Okay. So a motion for him to spend discretionary funds, which is certainly appropriate and allowable. How many? Two vehicles. Two. Okay. And in the process to trade the two that you have, if for some reason the trade doesn't satisfy, then you'll bring those back and we'll declare them surplus and sell them, right? If sure. for some reason it's not if, sufficient. If for some reason the trade isn't satisfied, yeah. we'll do that. Okay. All right. We have the monies to cover it. Okay. Entertain a motion to uh, approve this request. Discretionary funds, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Discretionary funds. Discretionary funds. Oh, yes. I've heard that two times, but yeah. I want to make sure. Yeah. Uh, what was the year of those two you're trading in? Uh, one's a 05, and I believe the other one's a 16. Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. I need a VIN number. <laughs> 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 we, we need to be a number actually for our boss. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get, get that to Miss Karen. <laughs> After the meeting. Okay. Miss Karen. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions or comments other than be sure to get the VIN number on the trade in items? Okay. If there's nothing else, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Heard nothing but I, so I assume that carried with a unanimous vote. I, did I miss a vote? Did y'all vote? You didn't vote? Yeah. Okay, I just didn't hear it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to look around next time. We had, it's a four to nothing vote. <laughs> the, the attorney voted too. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. That was the purchase of vehicles. Next is a uh, discussion about uh, K9. Yes. Uh, <coughs> the Kevin County. The Sheriff's Office want to expand its canine program. We had the opportunity to acquire a dog. I went ahead and bought the dog out of discretionary funds. I did so we, that we were in a bid with them. In other words, somebody was fixing to buy this dog. And I regret that I didn't inform y'all ahead of time. Uh, but we're gonna, the dog is for patrol. Uh, we have an officer picked out to to send them off for training. Uh, the dog was $7,000. Uh, we have the dog in our possession, and he's he's actually a, a really good dog. He's ready to activate now. He's we ready to activate now. We just need to we just we need to send our officer to okay. be trained, and that was that 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 was a package deal, guys. A really good deal. $7,000 for the dog and the training that goes with it. Um, so I just. Y'all was a blessing. So it's uh, so at this point, then you want to insure it and the other things are appropriate right. for for. A That's patrol. right. Now this is a dog for patrol. I also have another dog I want to right. mention. So is there a motion to uh, approve this uh, placing this dog on the insurance and and uh, whatever other uh, uh, steps we need to take for approval? Uh, That's all I know. Of. Other than notification. Right, we, we would be approving an additional salary for the handler um, or for the 
care of the vehicle, uh, care of the dog, and then also income. <coughs> okay. The additional salary, not being for a new person, but for the uh, the uh, additional the hours extra, uh, because the person keeps the dog at their home. That's right. What is dog and training? And He's trained in uh, seven different narcotics to search. He he is a narcotics dog. Uh, he's not a bite dog or a tracking dog. He is 100% narcotics. He's very friendly. I think he could probably step on his head. He wouldn't bite you. But he's a he's a he's a really friendly dog. His name's Nuka. What about the cost of uh, the food and those sorts of things? Is well, I'll cover. I, I'll be. I'll cover the kennel, and uh, as far as the food's mm -hmm. concerned, it'd be just like the other, other canine we have. Okay. Same deal. Same deal. That's what we're doing. I don't remember what we had. Do you? Same. I would S assume it would be the same. same. We would need to do the same, same agreement for both. Okay. All right. You didn't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, is there a motion to approve this? Tell you what, why don't we do this while we go ahead and talk about the second one that you mentioned as well. And okay. Well, the second one is uh, uh, I've been in touch with a program in Crestview called Paws, and they take a uh, they take abandoned canines and they train them to do different different things. I have a got I got a call about this one particular Staffordshire uh, Terrier. Uh, and he will be here for a demonstration on Thursday. Uh, and this dog is at no cost to the county. And he's trained in six different types of drugs. And uh, he is trained specifically in building searches and, uh, and vehicle searches. This dog, our intent is to keep it at the jail. Uh, we would provide a kennel for it at the jail away from the inmates. and. Uh, this one would not require an extra sal extra stipend and salary because it'll be on premises and it'll be taken care of on on duty and everything. Yeah, they but, have twenty four seven uh, coverage. Twenty four so seven take coverage. Care of All they ask is that we keep them updated with what kind of what kind of job it does, okay. and I have I have no problem with that. All right. Yes. So that's the second. He's expanding the canine program is it so really we need to approve because even though there's not a not going to be an additional pay pay stipend associated with it there is some additional cost for food and vet and then of course the cost of the insurance does our insurance premium change per head it does per head okay <coughs> so we're looking at two two units what any, anybody have questions or comments the sheriff while he's here. Also, I want to mention the the canine that we would use at the jail is will also be available to go to schools and things of that nature. We just we'll just schedule it. Uh, it'll be handled by an officer from the jail, a reliable officer. Would and that, uh, would that also have to go to training too. Yes, but the training is included with, and it was free. So uh, all we do is we send the officer to the training. And we take the dog in front of the judge, that, and he satisfies the judge with searching for for, for drugs. Okay. It, all dogs have to do the same thing. <coughs> okay. I guess you'd call it the judge will validate them. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I feel like that. In a way, you've put us in a, a position, you know, cart before the horse. Um, the procedures that we have set up weren't followed in getting the dog that you paid for. Um, in a way, I can understand that 30 years ago when we didn't have quick communication. It was a mistake that I made. And I take the full responsibility. Well, I don't, and, and <laughs> I won't say almost exactly what Tommy said, but I, you hold back on that, and I, if if we back up from this and say, no, Sheriff, we're not going to do that, 
then this commission's fixing to look bad before the community. And it's not our intent not to furnish the sheriff with what he needs or what he wants, but it puts us in a, in a bad situation or something when we have to back up and cover up. And like Tommy, I mean, every one of us took these phones all day. You know, send us a text. And we can't vote on that text, but I think Blake Turner would get a standard of where we stand for that. Well, I apologize. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking meant. for an apology. No, I'm no, it was, it was something that was it came up very fast. And uh, I had to act on it. Any other questions or comments? We don't have a motion yet, but we will do it informally. How many, how many, many cottage others? dogs do we have already? We have <coughs> one. We have one. one right now. So this would give us three. Is the other one a search dog, or is is, is it also a? They're they're, bo they're both narcotics dogs. The two that you're looking at now, but the first one you have is. The first one is a, is a shepherd and the other search and one. it's a search and rescue dog, or is it no, a drug it's a, dog? It's a drug dog. Okay. okay. <coughs> I agree with Tony. I mean, I think we'd be doing the department and the county a disservice by not taking the dog, but I just. I'm not trying to reprimand you in front of everybody. I, I, I just, get it. Totally you know, it's the first this, first we've talked about it, so I'm just giving you my feelings on it. The thing is, it puts the, the burden, again, of us having to approve stuff, taxpayers' dollars to take care of some of this stuff. That's man up and budget it, so on and so forth. Not that maybe we can't do it, but again, the way the procedure went. Right. So it's just, how long have you known about it prior to this, that, and the other? Just like I said, just a simple email, text, something to how they want to know. Keep us in the loop kind of thing. It's not like a blown out tire on a motor grader when you have to come back, you know, two weeks later and approve it. So emergency. So with all the uh, comments, questions, where do we stand? dog is not working now though the dog is mm -hmm. yeah okay no. well, i make a motion we approve it is a motion to, to approve in service retroactively the one purchase and the one uh, to to be accepted so both 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 units is there a second motion and a second and certainly appropriate for any more comments or questions at this time if you have any. Do you have what you need if we vote I will be favorably? Needing. I will need the she birth certificate. She something. needs bins on those. Yes, okay. I do. So the age and, and when he bought them. No. Uh, okay, there's a motion and a second. If there's nothing else, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All eyes on the on the affirmative, so we will move forward with that. Okay, sheriff. What else? Okay. Uh, last month, just to give y'all heads up, we picked up 656 bags of trash. This month, we're working on a little bit harder than that. Uh, it's a April has been declared the Al Caps. Clean up Alabama mm -hmm. month, so we're working as hard as we can. Our goal was to pick up twice as what we did last month. Let me let me just interrupt you and ask Frank. Do you have anything you want to share related to the? Yes, sir. I was going to do it here in our staff. All right, all right. We'll come we'll come back to him related to the cleanup, <coughs> and we appreciate I, what you shared with us. I just want to give y'all idea of what was going on, <coughs> and uh, uh, also we have a a, a bill that has to. That we're going to have to pay on our uh, our scanners. Okay. 
uh, I've got some updates on this, and I want to I want to tell you what they are. When you uh, say scanners, what are you referring these to? These are the body scammer scanners that we use at the jail that we purchase with COVID funds. There are two units there, right? That's okay. right. Uh, we have one that is tore up right now. It needs a micro switch. The cost of fixing this switch this switch is three thousand five hundred sixty four dollars and ninety six cents. The switch itself is two hundred seven dollars, hmm. but the labor. The, you have to fly somebody in, uh, it comes out to $3,000. But there's there's some other options here as well. Uh, they also have a yearly, this is a yearly uh, cost to the machines. Uh, the, well, it's the maintenance or a radiation safety survey and software updates and some other items that go with it including travel it comes out to eight thousand eight hundred eighty six dollars that's what we discussed a while ago so that's the total repair on the mm -hmm. on the machine that's down now that's the total that's 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 what would be looking at thirty five hundred dollars to fix one machine and eighty eight hundred dollars to inspect one machine uh, be like a calibration on the second one. yes yes however there's a there's another thing that we have an option for uh, and that is a warranty. We can extend the warranty. The warranty's run out. I got that phone call. Yeah, you can extend the <laughs> warranty. Uh, yeah, me too. A 12-month uh, uh, extended warranty is $2,700, I'm sorry, $27,800. A 24-month on both both units. On both, both machines, machines. On both machines. On uh, on a 24-month for the uh, both machines would be fifty six thousand two hundred eleven dollars. How much is a brand new one? Uh, how much is a brand new one? Uh, hundred and I believe they were one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. Were these the ones that we got? Like what we had out here? No, no they were these are, up. No, these are the these are the real the, the real ones. These okay. are like the uh, airport Not scanners. The yeah, so. these Air Force scanners. Uh, they'll be coming in from Conroe, Texas. I can drive and get them cheaper. I, I would think so too, but this is what their rates are. First class. So what? So what you're saying is, a repair the one that's there now and do the, the, the uh, certification. To, the, the, what, the, way I, the, the way I the way I to repair the ones now and do the certification on both of them, you're looking at twenty twenty one thousand dollars, give or take. Or you can do a warranty for twenty seven thousand dollars, and it'll cover anything Covers all throughout of that. the year. Because it covers all of that, it doesn't, it it doesn't go that. retroactive back to when the warranty discontinued. It, it'll be a, it'll, it'll, it'll start, start today. It'll start for today. Months. But it won't cover the parts that they it, 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 it will, fix that. It will cover yeah, the parts that we've already discussed it. that with. And, you're, have, and you said you've had some ongoing issues, problems that, that were under warranty because they were new machines. That, and that's right. So, so, you know, setup issues, <coughs> things like that. Nothing, we haven't had no super major problems with them. So the switch is the first thing we've ever had to uh, consider even paying for. Uh, the, the the machine is technical in such a way that we we can't fix it, and I don't know of anybody local. I, I would want. I mean, they don't. I don't know if they know anything about the machine, but uh, these are the options that we have. So um, you're either gonna pay a repair bill. I'm either gonna is, pay a repair bill. Budgeted. Uh, either I'm gonna budget, pay. Gotta, let's see. We gotta do that. But twenty. How much is it used? Twenty-one thousand and some change, or I'm on. Or we can do a, a warranty for twenty-seven thousand, and it cover everything from. I thought it was twenty-eight five ninety-five. What is it? Don't make a note on. Stand there with a warranty. Look at the warranty. Well, I got another thousand dollars off of it since I spoke with you. Okay, so yes. twenty-seven. How much? Uh, twenty-seven eight hundred. Okay. This is the one that. They Everyone comes in, y'all bring them. Yes, I have guys, seen I got to tell you, it has reduced contraband in that jail tremendously. And there's no telling how many medical bills it has actually stopped from people bringing in, you know, dangerous, yeah. dangerous items. So every, every new person coming in, but also work release goes through the scan and yes. so forth. And so they just don't, they just don't bring stuff in because they know they're going to be scanned. No. Okay. And if they do bring it, we catch it. What are your thoughts, commissioners? You've heard the numbers and you know, 
this. This is a tough, a little tougher yeah, decision. So you said these were purchased with they were purchased COVID, with COVID funds. Could COVID funds cover? Because they also <laughs> check your temperature. Yeah. They check temperature. Mm -hmm. If some of these we take out here, could we use those points <laughs> over there? <clears throat> and I understand. I, I I do see where they they do limit some of the stuff because I've I've been over there before and we you know for the tour one time and you know, I had an X-ray pulled up for people that it does show. And I can see where it does. And, and another increased thing, amount of contraband coming in. Another thing to consider is each one of these machines has two generators. Or they're thirteen thousand five hundred dollars each if you had to replace one. If one was to go down, the warranty would cover that. How many different ones are tell me again and the Well he's saying he's gonna spend twenty one thousand or spend twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand gets a warranty and covers any future additional but the warranty, Please. this warranty that we're talking about lasts for how long? Just 12 month warranty? Well, that, that's 12 a 12 month, month warranty. From the day, 12 wow. months. Mm -hmm. And they came with a they came with They came with a warranty and it's just expired. How long was it? One year? Uh, well, we've had them longer we than probably had had them 24 them. months, I yeah, bet. Yeah, we probably had them two years. So it came with the standard two year warranty and it's just, warranty. just expired. It's sort of like, an, I guess, an extended warranty on your car. Yeah. That's the call. I mean, it's a, it's a tough decision. We don't know what's going to happen. We may not have another single demand in the next 12 months. But if we did, it'd be great to have the coverage and not worry about airline travel and all the other costs. And, and this, this also includes, this also covers all the, uh, you know, uh, maintenance and upgrades. You, yeah. know, you have a software upgrade that you'll need to do yearly. That's 3000 per machine. Uh, you had a radiation test you had to do yearly. That's $2,500 per machine. So the warranty will cover all of this and anything that tears it up. Okay. Well, I kind of think it's a no-brainer not to go with a warranty for the little bit of some money in what you just said. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, they both, one is operational now, the other one's not. Right. One's operational, the other one's got a switch that's messed up. Can Kevin, will Kevin in here right now? Can Kevin put that switch in? <laughs> It's talking about a switch. It's not talking about like a light switch. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a switch. It's actually Sensor up switch. under the the slide, the, the, the floor that slides. There's a switch under there. Okay. So we'd entertain a motion to approve, based on your comments, I mean, I guess approve the uh, Tony. Tony. The warranty. Purchase of the warranty. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second this because of the safety for all. And the, and the jail really, too. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah. They? yeah. They don't have to do the pat down on there. But they're just walking through there and it shows yeah. everything. So. And I don't know exactly where they're placed, but you, I know you have two in the jail. Is, is the traffic flow such that, I, I know right now you're using one, mm -hmm. but there is a need to have both of them operational, yeah. I assume, right? Okay. For we have a lot business. that goes in and out of the front of the jail, and we have a lot that goes in the yeah. back of the jail. So just location. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any From other questions? contingency funds or how you going to pay for this? Uh, yeah, I would put it under the contingency. Pay for so it. Extended extended warranty. Warranty. Extended extended warranty. Extended warranty. Budgeting every year, that's budgeted into the extended warranty. Yeah. Is the only warranty. one that's budget request. Yeah. Just, just to make myself clear, the extended warranty for 12 months is $27,800, and you can go up to 36 months. Uh, 24 months is 56000 Which is double. Two hundred eleven dollars and the thirty six is eighty two thousand six hundred fifty five. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it a year at a time. See if we can stand year. stand yeah, that. Right. They said just make sure we put it into like a you can budget, 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 budget yeah. it in yeah. next year. Yeah. Uh, also, I want to say before we had these scanners, I remember sending four people to the hospital because of some dope that got in. We haven't had that since then. I mean, so it's, doing it's a doctor bill we don't have. Doing the job. Do okay. its job. All right. If there's nothing else, we do have a motion and a second. Everybody is ready and all minds are clear. We'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. One one last thing, and I'm not asking for nothing. All right. Tell us. <laughs> but uh, we're having a fingerprint clinic here on Saturday for the, ch for the children. And uh, Anybody who would like to bring their child up here and have them fingerprinted for 
safety reasons, you're welcome to come. So, okay. That go, does that go into a, a database nationwide or just a family It does. And no, it's a database. We're going to a database nationwide. We'll have the machine up here and the personnel to run it. And because uh, I know years ago when my kids were little, yeah, you know, they I, put we, we did it too. Fingerprint, everything. I did it too. There was ink everywhere. You got a card. You, did you get a, a card to carry with the You'll get all, child's the, all, picture all the stuff you need. It'll be, it'll be here ready. It's what pretty, time? It's a good idea. We're from 9 until 1, but we'll stay until everybody's served. This Saturday? This coming, this coming Saturday. In this building? Right here. Okay, good. In the commission chamber. All right. Thanks, Sheriff. All right. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Uh, if nobody uh, objects, I want to move the ARPA projects. Let's just move that to the end. We'll let that be our last thing, uh, just because it could it could drag out. I, I don't know that it will, but if it does, we'll have plenty of time. Let's go to H next. Consider contract with well-based auction site Gov Deals. Karen, you have, have something to share with us on that. Yes, we were, I was re recently contacted by with a representative from Gov Deals. He uh, expressed his uh, gratitude for us being a long-time customer of theirs. We were their customer number 44 or 46, something like that, and they have uh, grown since. And the fee structure attached with the selling of vehicles has changed over the years, so they've got different customer bases. Some are seven and a half percent that we that pay to the uh, vendor. Others, the customer pays the fee, and it goes up to twelve and a half percent. They're at a point now they're wanting to get everyone in their customer base on the same level. So what they're suggesting now is to move the cost to the purchaser of the auction item away from the county, so that will save us the seven and a half percent. There's two options though with the twelve and a half percent. Um, they can collect the 12.5% and they would retain it all uh, from the customer or we can elect to collect the, and they would collect all the monies that were um, charged during the auction. They would have all the handling of the funds or we can go with the rate where we keep 2.5%, they keep 10.5% and we collect the monies from the auction. So it's just at a point where y'all have to decide if it's worth that extra 2.5% for us to do the collections. They would still have to come to us for the bill sale, the titles, and picking up the actual asset. So it's just whatever so choice y'all decide. So we're still going to be involved anyway. It's cheaper for us already. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What's your recommendation, Karen, after thinking about it for a week? Well, I like a dollar, but um, <laughs> the two and a half you know, percent we keep, of course, it doesn't equal up to be much when you have an hundred dollar auction, auction item. Um, so it's just, I don't really care. I you know, the, the types of things we're selling through Gov Deals are, are kind of inside stuff and vehicles. We're selling quite a few of the vehicles there. Not the large vehicles, but the smaller, less, less expensive stuff. Is it financially worth the headache? And having to keep up with all the and deal with whoever comes in. I pass in. a lot of that headache on. <laughs> so yeah. really, um, uh, Rachel does collection of the cash a lot of times. I don't, I don't know that she's ever really had any issue with it. We've always we accept cashier check or either so cash. Um, we don't I do can, personal checks, so you don't have to worry about. I can that. see if uh, I mean when they when they notify us that it's sold, then it's on them that it's been paid for. Right. If the person shows up here to pay, we've got to make sure that we are comfortable. That, that we're getting money from them, we're going to check, we're going to take a check, certified funds. If, uh, I can just see it open and now, yeah, arms that yeah, may be a problem. It, could, it could be an issue. With I would seal carry deal now. You don't know who's walking in and out. Who's, who's, yeah. I would, I'm, I would consider it. <coughs> just let them do it. We can certainly change it at a future time. Uh, but I would, I would accept that the uh, transfer of the cost directly to the buyer, which is not uncommon in an auction, uh, and just let them cover the collection. Do we have that option? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Is, that, is that what you need from us? Is which option we want? Yes, which option so you would like to go with? Ten and a half to them and two and a half to us, or twelve and a half to them and we don't do any of the the fun collection, which is on forty three, right? Page forty three mm -hmm. has the options. Uh, B, B1, B2, I would B3. recommend. I would recommend at this point that we just let them collect it, so we don't add that undue pressure here. And, uh, because you're talking about collecting on every item that sells potentially if it's a local I mean every yeah, we, are, they collect, are they collecting <laughs> right. 
But at this point, they've been collecting it and remitting it, right? No, or you've been collecting it all this time mm -hmm. for nothing? Yes. No, you didn't get two and a half percent? Mm -mm. We paid them seven and a half percent and did the work. All they did was hand them the auction block. Yeah, okay. I thought they were already collecting. Mm -mm. Okay. So did I. Yeah, I just saw. <laughs> I assumed that they were collecting when they when they accepted the bids. I didn't know folks were so paying here. Let them collect it. Has there ever been a problem, Rachel, or is it not an <laughs> issue at all? Depends on what day of the week. Well, let's take let's make the two and a half percent. Then we did it anyway. If you're comfortable with that, can we do it? We can do it. All right. Make the money. What do you want to do, Michael? Whatever is easiest with Karen and Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> But really, if it's, if it's not mon <laughs> monetarily worth the he the headache, well, we're already doing it. Like I said, I didn't realize that. I assume the auction could you be doing in, we could you be doing more important check. things? Well, well, really? if we're already doing it, then I guess what we're saying is is that we'd lose two and a half percent. Yes, yes. <laughs> but it could be minimal, or it could be. I mean, it's going to what you're selling that you could actually bring a little bit of cash in. Ballpark figure of what. Uh, uh, one year we had all kind of vehicles. We s got rid of a lot that was sitting in the back lot, and so. But then last year it was n next to nothing, three thousand dollars. I think we need two and a half percent. I don't sit right here and change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need if I could make a motion, I would. But if you want, to I can make a motion. Right, yeah. okay. All right. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'm gonna second. All right. <laughs> Without further discussion, we'll vote. All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Aye. Was that an opposed? That was an opposed. <laughs> so it passed two to one. Rachel, it's on you. All right. What's, what else you have? That's it on that part. Consider emergency purchase of tires for the engineer's office. Ron, what do you have? Well, we're ready for the tire market to get settled down, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so at the end of last month, we turned in our lease graders that we've been using for five years, and as part of that, we had to replace some of the tires. Uh, we have a supply side shortage of tires, and the tires available were not on the state bid, so we had to do an emergency purchase. So we're being asked to ratify this emergency purchase. Uh, and I want to say, I remember Lynn talking about they got to be, what, 50% at bare minimum to turn them back in. And yes, sir. Can we take these new tires, the 21s we got now, and put them in the Well, we, we do have the, the used tires that have less than 50%, and we will use those in the future. You can put those on the front of the grader and use them as steering tires instead of driving tires. Set your new ones aside. Set the new ones, take the new ones off and put those on and set the new ones aside for yes, we can sell that as well. Yes. When the time is right. When the time is right. right. Is there a motion to uh, ratify this purchase? I'm not making a motion. There's a motion and a second. Second. I did hear both of those, all right. <laughs> the third. We, we're going to have a, a unanimous vote. Get ready. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. That's an approved. Uh, next is a uh, consider solicitation of bids for highway striping paint and reflective beads. Yes, sir. Anything to tell us on that, or just you need to, you need to bid those out. We got to bid them out. We need to get back in business of striping roads. Springtime's coming. Is there a motion to? Uh, yes. All in, <laughs> <laughs> there is a motion to uh, solicit bids on those items. Is there a second? Yes. Questions, comments? There is a motion. There is a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That's, that's approved. They were unavailable for a while, weren't they? The Either the reflected materials or I believe the paint was as well. The paint also? It's all supply side, yeah. COVID stuff. Okay. That's approved. Ron, let's see what else is on here. Uh, consider a solicitation of bids for blast media. Tell us about blast media. We have a sand blaster to perform maintenance on bridges. Uh, typically, you build a bridge and then nothing gets done to it for 50 years, but um, 
the steel pile will rust if it's exposed, especially in the splash zone where that water is going up and down. And uh, I've got about 75 <coughs> bridges currently that need the, the piling sandblasted and repainted. Okay. Uh, we have the blaster, and uh, the blast media is not on state bid, so we need to, uh, to bid it out. And what are they there. actually using, Ron? Is it sand or beads or something? Um, I, I'll get well, into I didn't, the spec. I didn't know if you it's, actually it's, it don't matter. I there's just, about I was just curious. The, the machine only take one type of blast media? No, there's about three. Oh, three the one that comes ones. in casket, they use some, has some kind of glass in it to help yeah. knock it on, not just sand. Right. It's not sand. It's, okay. it, it's a mine material. Is there a motion to uh, solicit bids for blast material? Make a motion. There's a motion and second. Any other questions, comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, same sign. All right. Approved. Uh, you want you to share a report while you're at the podium? I think they got all of your stuff there. Yeah, 107 project up, update. Yeah, 107 project. Uh, the attorneys on both sides have agreed to the language of the deed, and we should be closing, I would think, no later than the end of next week. And once we close, what's the time frame of breaking ground? Is that the next step, breaking ground after we close? Immediately. Time yeah, frame. Immediately. We'll start immediately. immediately grubbing. And we're having a local attorney doing the closing, right? Is yes. that what I understood? Mark Murphy. Mark. He's a, I believe he's a real estate attorney. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions for Ron Wallow? Have him corner. Yep. Call him up and he'll be there. Oh, uh, yeah. He will. Uh, Frank Tizzle Road, we're going to pave that today. That's where we're going to move replace that uh, bridge with a culvert. Okay. So that'll be done today. That's in Kansas District. He's not here on the thing. I believe that's Ken. It's either that or yours. That was Ken's. Ken, yeah. yeah. So that'll be done today. Okay. I know we have some folks from Sugar Hills here. We don't have public comments scheduled, uh, but just to address the concern that I know exists there. Uh, the engineers from the road and bridge crews went out and they they undertook routine standard maintenance on right of way. Uh, it's, what, it's what we do on 1,350 miles of road, uh, day in and day out. It's different where they did the work in Sugar Hills because it's it's perceived as as uh, front yards. People have maintained, mowed, and so forth. But our crews have committed. The engineers have committed that they're going to go back in and, and uh, dress that, finish that, so that it, it, it looks the acceptable and appropriate, seed it, whatever we have to do, so that it blends back in and is again a, a finished part of that. That way they can maintain yards. it. I did mention that the Lynn, I think you had mentioned mm -hmm. Lynn, and Lynn said they would go down there and dress yeah. back up. So we will dress yeah. that. I, I know it's created a lot of un, uh, concern and frustration, and we, we share that, but uh, again, it's, it's from our perspective, things are changing in the county. We have subdivisions. I know uh, Sugar Hills has been there for quite a number of years, but we're getting that sort of development throughout the county. So we probably need to look at our, our procedures and uh, make some changes to how things like that are approached. But uh, again, if they go on the back 40 fence line down at Tony's out in the country, he, he doesn't think twice about it. But when you're in somebody's front yard, all of a sudden it becomes an issue. So we want to be consider considerate of the landowners, property owners, taxpayers, and we will do that going forward. We'll, we'll finish this so that I think it will be acceptable to all the landowners. And we just apologize for the, for the disruption. I I know up on Strong School Road, but a lot of that was fixing the drainage issue before <coughs> that road becomes paved right, with right. the funding that was available. That had to be fixed. And I think with yeah. Sugar Hill, that got kind of yeah. done, but uh, they, were, they have committed to go back to it. From what I understand. Yeah, we'll send crews out to dress that up. All right, good. Put down rows of matting where it's necessary. All right. Yeah. Ron, we appreciate it. Appreciate you being here, standing in for Lynn today. Appreciate the good work that you and your department do. My pleasure. Yes, sir. <coughs> Let's go back to, let see what time is it, Tyndall 10. Let's go back to G, consider ARPA projects. Commissioners, uh, we'll ask Karen to kind of lead the discussion on that. What do we have here? Uh, in front of you have a list of the, well, the draft list of uses for the COVID or ARPA funds. Um, we needed 
to have a kind of preliminary project list. It doesn't need to, we don't have to be locked into this, but we need something to go on to start with to so show where we're going to commit our funds to so that we can kind of proceed with the IAC and they kind of know what projects to work on and we have a better idea of what y'all want to move forward on since time is of essence in these projects. So y'all all have in front of you the list that we had kind of reviewed at the last workshop. Right. And um, just kind of need y'all to let me know if these are still the projects that y'all have identified that y'all would no. be interested in moving in on and if not, what changes we need to make. I know at the last time when we had that, I think the engineer's department had asked about a pole barn. Yes. The short term their equipment I'd like to add that to it. That's not actually listed down here. Um and a and a Do you have an estimate? redo the bathrooms at the actual Well we mentioned um offices also because of theirs being on top of each other, so I don't know exactly how far if y'all want to incorporate it all together or if it's separate. I'm not sure what y'all have in mind in that. But I do think the bathrooms is something that right. and I and I and especially one of those I thought about the shop. shop. Mm -hmm. That that one is in dire need of some attention. And I think there's some they concerns need, about they need to build a view one outside well. because you can't do that much more without so what I would what I would propose we don't a lot of these as you know all these are estimates on here uh, for yes. instance the uh, fix the boilers we have one and a half million dollars it could be uh, nine hundred thousand or it could be one point seven we just don't know so we just need we need the list so that we can then begin incurring some of the uh, professional costs the engineering the architectural costs to move forward and get firm estimates and then we'll know what our real opportunities are. So add the offices that you mentioned at the engineer's office. Add that building uh, and the bathroom work and put an estimate to it, and then we can get all of that reviewed is the way I would propose it to be. And I, I have actually spoken with Kevin, and like he said, some of our air conditioner yeah. units may not need replacing because mm -hmm. they're three years old. Yeah. yeah. And they've got the ultraviolet <coughs> that area that's actually supposed to mm -hmm. kill any viruses. But he did send me a list of some of the ones that's over 10 to 15 years old that he would like to see. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, when we're talking about the, the HVAC units, it's not everything. It's the ones that that really and truthfully Kevin deems, so now he's the maintenance. That's correct. I wouldn't do them all for sure. Yeah. Hopefully they'll cut some off of that. Do y'all still want to look at doing office spaces for the engineer or as part of the, with the pole barn? like? Addition or changing up? Something? Yes, and I don't know if Ron can answer it. I know when I, you know, we mentioned I had mentioned Lynn afterwards. Lynn was concerned about where they could put a pole barn because I didn't, I didn't actually realize that the old Columbia General Hospital it used to be set here is buried back there. Oh. So he said when you dig it down, then it's going to be where do you hit? Yes, I would still like to see them get some, you know, if we could figure out a place to put it for that. Especially gets our equipment off Monday. Mm -hmm. Out of the weather. Yeah. Do you think uh, three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollars for those various projects you named, or do you have a thought as to no, what it I might cost? Right. Look at here. That's why I said we just need to get estimates on stuff. So, so let's put that. Well, let's let's add. Why don't you just add those to this list, and then let's get estimates, and we'll see what our numbers are. But let's go ahead and get firmed up on the list. Right. And for for sake of discussion, let's just. At 350, and then let's see how close we come to that. And that still leaves us about uh, 275,000 of flexibility unless we change something else. But we have so pole barn off, uh, offices, uh, expansion or improvements, and uh, improvements in the shop, which gets to the bathroom. Those, those guys need something. All right. What else? The uh, premium pay is already on the books and we've already approved it, so that's that's a done deal. We're gonna end up at the end of the time and we're gonna have spent a certain amount of money there. And we, we just, I think I would like for us to kind of project that out to see if that, the 1.56 is still a close number on that, if you don't mind. We just, did with the IC. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the audit is, is an unknown. I, I think the 60,000 will more than cover that, but we'll we'll see, we'll leave that, leave it budgeted. IAC fee the two. IAC fee, the two fifteen eight ninety is that the new discounted that's the amount? Yes. Okay, so that's so firm. Uh, and then you get into the what ifs or the discretionary stuff. So we had the uh, resurface walking trail. We discussed that last time. It's two hundred thousand, and that's 
in-kind cost, which is not, obviously is not cash, but I, my proposal on that, if we did that, we could shift the funds then into the road and bridge department to cover their in-kind effort. And so the that total- was, That was my question. Now the, this, let me go back and look at this again, Greg. Yeah. This 200,000, <coughs> is that strictly for in-kind? The 200, I think the in-kind was approximately 100, I, I forget. Uh, Lynn had looked at that particularly, and the 200, I think, was pretty a ballpark for cost of, total cost of materials and in-kind, if we did it all. I, and look, when I say this, I'm fixing to give about half the people in the county off. Uh, but schools, including junior colleges, four-year colleges and whatever, are having money thrown at them from every direction now, mm -hmm. from federal money to state money to local money. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to throw $200,000 of that when they've got such an excess of money mm -hmm. that these people are traveling on roads that we can't keep up. And look, I think Nature Trail's great. I used to before I got so lazy, I used to go walk the Nature Trail occasionally. But uh, it's hard for me. The in-kind service I'm absolutely good with. Okay. But we get above the in-kind service and I've, I've got a problem. Okay. So uh, back that off is what you're proposing That's from the 200 saying. and just say in-kind only. And, and most likely, I think Lynn, I, I forget the exact number, let's just assume 100,000 for, for sake of discussion, for in kind, okay? The general renovation and added building the fifth and border, that's all under 1.5? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I think Kevin kind of, the other day we talked about it some, has kind of got a, he has to get an estimate, but just the general ballpark from the people of what it would take to do the borders and, and I'll I think it's on about it actually be easier to, uh, and I wish Kevin was here to put the border to the outside he said because the way some of them are now they'd have to almost take the roof off the jail just uh, replace, replace yeah. them replace yeah. them so that's one thing that we really need to <coughs> that's with these projects you'll have yeah. the professionals that will come in yeah. that, that help to kind of make sure that you're using the funds so the most appropriate the way so the question on the boilers, it will require an architect. So in approving this, I would like I to. Would, I would think so, Greg, will, just kind of discussing it with Kevin. So. I don't see how it could. And so I would like for our approval to be to move forward with architect. Kramer. Hey, there he is, Kevin. <laughs> just in time, buddy. So, pardon me, I did drift a little bit. I do have a gentleman working on that estimate. And the reason the cost fluctuation, the reason I put so much money on it is because there is a potential to put it back like it is, but part of the roof has to be removed and put back. Uh, that'll be very costly. Um, there's also a possibility of putting two boilers and a holding tank just outside the facility and having a water pump to pump it in. Uh, and that's that's an option also. Um, and then if we and then decide to build another building, we could, it would be easier to tie into it from there. Well, we yeah, the, the building that we built, um, in 2014, I believe, the new, the newest addition is actually, those boilers supply that with hot water also, okay. or supply it with water also. It's plumbed to the jail now. Yes, if you had an addition, um, it, would, it, would, it could be plumbed to that. There, there's circulating pumps that pump it throughout the jail, keep it moving, keeps hot water moving. Um, most of us at our house have a water heater, and you turn the hot water on, it's not hot instantaneously. Uh, the jail has hundreds of sinks and, and water, and all of them are hot as soon as you touch it because it keeps it circulating all the time. Okay. So it's an expensive uh, system, period. And it's got two boilers and, uh, and then a 750 gallon holding tank and then two circulating pumps. And we probably have to add a pump and, uh, and then add a possibly a small building. I don't know what the enclosure would require, but I, I would say a small building, you know, to, in, to house a little bit right beside the jail or against the jail. You know, it, it could be 50,000 to $100,000. You know, to, to build a building for this stuff, just depending on how, how it needs to be right. built and how, you know, architecturally and design and all that, it could be $20,000. But like we said, we need to get an architect involved in it. <clears throat> well, I've, I've got a professional boiler system. Push the, push the button on this side of the door. 
No, on this, there you go. Yeah, that should let you out. I have got an, um, a gentleman that's a professional with an Al Hill Boulders automobile that has sold me parts before. I've sent him pictures and all of it, and he is, hasn't got back to me yet. He's working on a, an estimate to replace um, our existing motor system. If it's done, you just redirect to those tanks and boilers. Correct. Would you have to remove the old ones, or could they just stay without they, having? They could just stay there. Not have to remove the roof. I, I think and all that's that. a lot of the cost. I'm looking at a, yeah. removing the roof and a crane to get all this stuff out. I, I, I could see thousands, if not tens of thousands, of dollars, just taking the roof off, removing it, and putting it back. As well as the danger that's involved. As well as all the danger involved. Yeah, taking we talk about taking fence down, possibly. I mean, it's it's really uh, hard to even comprehend um, what it could take to get it out of there. And then you, when you expose the top of the jail, you you got to hurry up and get it, or have some temporary way to. So the amount the amount we have on here, Kevin, one point five is should that, you think it'll cover that? I, I'm I'm sure should. that it won't cost that much. Would, but without knowing, you don't want us to reduce it yet, do you? You could, I think. I, I think I think it'd be less than a million dollars. Okay. Yeah, but we, but this ain't this ain't just talking about doors. This is including the the, the, the building, building the with the um, a new a new building. Oh, a whole new building. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A medical, a medical area. Yeah. I would just leave it at that for right now, and let's get some. You know, I've never, I've never done anything without a estimate. Just how it is, you know. Unless I'm doing it myself. But I think that, and one of the biggest questions is getting, the, you know, who we're going, how we're going to get an architect to do all this. Also, is part of the question. Well, and we have that arranged. Yeah, that. we're trying to figure out what, what. We're just throwing numbers at it because we're trying to figure out what we can and can't do. Well, this and is what we have to start with this before I can move to the next step to do that. Right, so exactly. That's so that's why we're uh, – listen, the 1.5, I think, is close to the building and the – I think the borders are going to be less than less than $350,000, I, I, I would think. Um, and, again, without – the, the stuff is very expensive, and it's going to be very expensive. The construction is going to be very expensive if we put them back like they are. I think we might save fifty to a hundred thousand dollars by putting them on the outside of the jail. I don't know that for sure. I'm just going by what me and uh, the salesman had talked about. Right. So let's leave that item as is, Commissioner Z. Uh, that estimate. Uh, next item is uh, broadband. Investing in broadband, and, and we won't really know until November for sure how that how that could proceed. But uh, we have an amount identified for that entertain any discussion if you choose to do different or leave it as is if there's no conversation about it the improvements uh, I, I would like to see if we can't get it to all of our residents not on how we could do it not, you know because we had talked about teaming up with with cousins or maybe what if another entity you know you don't know if these other rural, rural co-ops you want to do like covenant put it in their area you know how I think from from what I've learned, the, I think the best option is for Covington to do it, and we have the two or three pockets particularly that aren't going to be served because they're not utility customers of Covington, but I think Covington would consider spreading the broadband into those areas. Uh, we just have to we have to look at that, but we have to have something to move forward with. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm like Mike. I'd like to make sure that before we make a – that kind of commitment that every resident of Coven County had an opportunity. Yeah. Well, this, and I understand some of them's on a little pine, that's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that kind of thing. But, I, you know, maybe Mr. Short himself could meet with us and tell us yeah. what. Okay. Or we could so, meet with him. <coughs> so that. Put him out, but. I, I guess the point is that's not a firm number. It's just it's a working number right. still, and we're right. not committing that yet. But right. it's a Contingent working number. Contingent discussion with. For further discussion, okay. All right, we'll we'll set up a meeting with him. And, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Karen. The next item, uh, at least, uh, got the RV campground and park improvements. Uh, Five hundred thousand commissioners. You have any additional thoughts on that? We I know we've not had any additional really uh, information gathering since our workshop two weeks ago. Anything on that you want to say or propose? I'm just Karen, hoping that Power South will, will help with us on the projects that we've identified, and, and hopefully it won't be that much needed from our standpoint. Um, I, I think we've worked well with them in the past, and I think they're eager to help. I 
think they see the improvements we've made and I think they're pleased. I, I hope that that will help. I, I know that some of them had a, a meet with Power South and had a little discussion. I would like to see them, the ones that was involved in that, go back to them mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, how much and then, you know, we can, I definitely have no problem with committing funds up there, but if they're willing to help, that'll free up some of these other funds for other projects. Yeah, I'm, look, I, I'm like Kieran in that. I was one of the ones that met, by the way, with them up there. And uh, very nice meeting, I thought. Uh, but I think, too, that they're well pleased with what the county has done at point A, and I think they're more than willing to work with us. But I, too, I'd, I'd love to go back and sit down with them again. And okay. All right, we'll set that. So we'll, we'll hold that item as a firm up later. All right. All right. Uh, the 36,000 courthouse door and recording counters and so forth, we, we've, uh, that work has already been committed and is uh, maybe, uh, maybe completed or nearing it's completion. Near. It's near the, the door is complete. The counters are being put in. They've done the final measurements to have those built. Is that number in, in line with uh, what the final cost is going to be pretty close? I believe it's going to be a little, it's going to be close. Yes. Okay. If you hadn't been by and seen it, Looks you would never really and truthfully have thought the door was not originally part of the building. Yeah. I've had to do some bidding set there here recently, and it actually looked very, very good. I think it's actually helped the flow. Yeah. Okay. One of the reasons it looks that good is because those doors that are there actually are original to the building. Okay. We, we, uh, some of the trim around it is new. Those doors were actually in the old jail stores, and they probably most likely I know it. They look. It looks good. That's why we don't ever throw anything away. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Karen, tell us about arena re renovations. What's it? Well, that's uh, that building has uh, been built quite some time now, and so as we had discussed, there are certain things that need to be done. I know we talked about the RV parking lot, uh, the drainage in it. Uh, it's going to have to be repaired at some point whether we use this funds or have to use county funds, but that's something that we might want to consider. The other things that we mentioned that we would like to have would be the upgraded uh, sign at the door that has the display and the inside big screen on the wall so that you could use it for multi-purpose events or if we can ever get high enough tech one day to be able to broadcast on, on the uh, screens as well. So that's the things that we would like to have. Um, okay. You can keep on going. The sign at the road, we, we talked about that too one time. We could yes. get the sign at the road that we could change. That, that we can, right. That's How about the commercial street? <coughs> heaters. The heaters, we, uh, that was one of the discussions. Um, we have looked at different options, and I think the best is a heating area so people can at least go to a certain area to warm up. Um, I don't think you can heat that whole facility because most events you have the doors wide open. I mean, when you have we'll be when you have horses coming and going, pretty quick. It's yeah, it, it, it's I'm just really. Get a from the city on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, will we look at the natural gas, or will we look like the infrared type? Or will, should we look at just look at both to and see? The, gas the infrared is natural gas. Okay. It's just a radiant type heat instead of a fan force. A blown fan force type heat. Um, you can see them a little better. In warm up areas, that's typically what, what they have. Okay. The estimate we had, I think Kevin, was seven hundred or seven seven hundred dollars per heater. Right. That's um, just estimate for the heater. That's but not, that's not installation. We never get to, to uh, install them. The gas companies, we don't know when they'll have time. You, you could hire a state licensed contractor. Um, I don't think we ever had. I, I gave some numbers to Karen, and she wanted to call. I don't think we ever got. We didn't go this us, far. Uh, yeah. <coughs> to give us an estimate on on actually the labor. The EMA took a temporary fix down at one of two of our events, I think, and just that one area, we got so many compliments. People saying, "Oh, this is so much better." So, if you actually had something in place, it would make a substantial difference. It gets it's extremely the, cold that, in there. In, in our defense, EMA did a great job. It was also the first time we had run all the heat down here. And when I went down there about nine o'clock that morning, the front door was standing open, and you could walk up to it. You could feel the heat coming out. Of it. Um, the heat that's down there does work. It's it's uh, it's not designed to heat it fast, though. It's kind of like the central heat at your house. If you leave it off a long time, it takes a little while to warm it up or cool it down. So it's uh, it takes the edge off for sure. It, it does. It was a lot better when all the heat was on. Right. 
those and things. Everybody's got a chance to keep the doors closed. Um, but it's just hard to police that. So it makes it is. But when it's freezing outside, it's, it, I think it was 60, I think the temperature is 62 degrees when I walked in there, and it was 35 ish outside. So it was a tremendous oh, difference. It's huge. In outside. And everybody knows. That's the knows. first time we have run all the heat because it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. But when you turn all the heat on, it does work. Other thing that I think we mentioned was about the big fans. Yes. Not having you know needing a, a, the wiring up a different size yeah. wire, right. you know, and get them to turn it faster is going to circulate more air for the summertime, which is going to help. So I, I would look at that also. <coughs> All right. So so the amount we have on that is two hundred fifty thousand for any and all of these things possibly, and I think we just have to take it a step at a time and establish a budget for that, and just make sure we don't run out of the out of the other end, but I think we can get an, a good firm estimate on all of those items so we know, so we can pick it Yeah, I just, just a few minutes ago got a, and look, this is not a direct quote, this is not a, this is what it will cost deal, but on a four by eight for your inside, roughly $70,000. Four by eight. Like a, a TV replay screen. I think that's a little more than I was expecting. <laughs> but I, th I think that, you know, I mean, look, we all get used to now walking in Walmart and see that 58 inch yeah. TV for five ninety nine or whatever it is. So then you get to thinking about, well, how much possibly could a four foot by eight foot <laughs> one be? Well, I guess it can be 70,000. <laughs> Uh, also, I was thinking you'd get one a lot bigger than that for sure. Yeah. Big. How big is your flag that you got hanging on the wall, Kevin? Uh, at the arena, yeah. the flags are ten by twelve. Yeah. It's oh that flag, the I big saw flag. Oh, um, I'm not sure. It's probably uh, it's probably twelve by sixteen or twelve by twenty. Probably twelve by twenty. I bet. Oh wow. Fourteen by twenty. So just to think That's about huge. that being yeah. beside yeah. there, you so can. <laughs> We may need to give us a jumbo car to go with it. Yeah. Okay. When the football stadiums is remodeled, we might have a jumbo car. <laughs> we have to watch that's good deals. If that's, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> Four by eight sounds extremely small. Yes, I know it, it does. does. It really I, I does. Too, that's the size of a piece of plywood. Yeah, that's not, that's not that big. Yeah, I would say it needs to be yeah, that's 20 by 30 or 15 <laughs> by So if we leave. So if we leave that 250, <laughs> then we may be trimming some stuff. Just yeah. So yeah. We say. But yeah. let's let's leave that as a working number anyway. How about that? Yeah. And Sharon and, and I both have been in contact with a professional rodeo announcer, and he has uh, Dodge, Chrysler, Piranha, which is huge in the horse world um, product. Spurs, Big Picks. He does NBHA, National. If you watch any kind of rodeo channel, you're going to hear him. And he ca he talked with Sharon and called me yesterday. And he's willing to possibly come talk to the commission about booking after certain improvements are done so that he can kind of plug that in and um, and had lots of good things to say about our arena and um, and that it can compete on a bigger level with and you know with the ones we talked about which was the lasers and right. certain things that I thought that was pretty cool yeah. you don't get many calls like that mm -hmm. He, he asked how to be put on the yeah. agenda. He, he's a wonderful voice at home. Great radio announcer. Um, anyway, he just asked how to be put on the agenda and to come and talk about some of the improvements and how that would help. And All right. Uh, last two items that are on here, ventilation. And I think that was primarily Back to you, Kevin. courthouse, <laughs> duct work, other things there that an architect would look at or an engineer and give us some uh, ideas on upgrades. Uh, that, that kind of stands in with that air conditioning yeah. thing. Uh, a lot of the, now the courthouse is one of the only buildings we actually install all those infrared uh, filters to filter the COVID virus as, as well as other viruses also. The courthouse should be in as good a shape as any um, other than the summer community. So that was a we definitely could spend some money on it. I don't think that's a pri priority really anywhere. Uh, other than the units being so the units that are so old could use the infrared filters. And I'm saying 
infrared. I'm not sure that's the right terminology, but there's a, there's a filter, an electronic filter that goes in. It cleans the air as it goes through the unit. It takes the place of those little mobile units you see in the air cleaner just to clean your house. This is sitting installed in the ductwork um, has a blower motor inside and just cleans all the air that's you know circulating through the building. I think that's probably not a bad idea so for every unit in the, in the town. So I think a, a, an assessment of all the units and then the ventilation and, and you know, maybe we could shave some off of that. That's what you're saying, probably. We, we, had we put it for, uh, for around $10,000, and there's 14 units over there, so it's a little less than 1,000 a unit. Okay. So it's pretty quick math to, to have it done to all those units we wanted to. Okay. So we hope we can shave a lot off of that then. And then uh, the next line item is the courthouse renovation. What, what particularly? Kevin and I have been discussing the restrooms. Um, he's talked to someone about what he could do to make them more accessible. More handicap accessible mostly. We only have one actual handicap stall in the whole courthouse. It's okay. a very old building. And um, the bathrooms are old. So we want to we want to review that. Uh, and then also I think um, there was a request from Chuck Patterson about the um, sewage and ventilation, but I think Kevin may have repaired that. Well, we found the problem. Well, fixed it recently. Um, we actually put a new fan system ventilation in the bathroom area where he's where that concerns him, which is right outside his office. He's got a bathroom right across from his office door, and um, we have addressed that Good. to some extent recently. I haven't heard any complaints or as many complaints since then. But so. other than that, I don't. No one else has really presented any, anything to us that would be a but need that I know. Handicap renovation yeah. goes for years. We're biggest thing in the bathrooms and handicap accessibility would be the, the next um, right. and so we have 500,000 that we can look at all of that as under that part of the budget hopefully it'll come in something less than that and if we uh, just remind you we added a $350,000 line item for the stuff related to the engineer's office and the pole barn and so forth so that will leave us with at that point about 275,000 Assuming all those are right to the penny, I don't. I think we're going to start trimming money off of them. But assuming they were all right to the penny, two hundred seventy-five thousand, we can do some paving or whatever. Yeah. Whatever ever other options yeah. come up, yeah. So, uh, Karen, uh, what do you need us to adopt this as just corrected or changed or just basically uh, as a, um, a resolution to approve for the these projects for identified. starting? Yes. Okay. That can yeah. be changed or modified, but this is our starting point and where we're going to start. So when we when we approve this, then she's going to reach out and she's going to find an architect or an engineer that's going to come in and do preliminary design or review of the boiler system in conjunction with whoever is already looking at that, whatever is needed. So she's going to start spending money on, on professional services to move forward on this if we approve and this. What we do is upload this to IAC and then they'll start helping direct us and okay. earn that money that we've paid for their assistance. So I'll note we uh, resurfaced the, the working trail. That's been changed to $100,000 uh, as an estimate. Uh, the broadband and, and the campground improvements are left in suspense. For the moment, I think we should leave them where, where they're line item there at 1500000 and add 350000 for the engineering. And that still leaves us a little bit of un allocated funds and would let her move forward with professional services. Is there a motion to approve these as just adjusted or discussed? Just as preliminary figure. As a preliminary to get the ball rolling on the services, yeah. Okay. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? second? And there is a second. Uh, I, I mean, I do think it's important to note that we're not, not committing uh, any amount on here as a, we're going to spend this on that item or else we're not right. we're not approving the uh, an expenditure or an appropriation at this point we're just approving projects that generally and move forward to get together more information so there's a motion second any other questions if not uh, all in favor say aye aye opposed same sign that carries unanimously so thank y'all for your input and thank you Karen for your work on that uh, reports from staff. This should wrap us up. Uh, anybody on the back row? Frank, come on, come on up and give us your spiel on, on cleaning up Covington County. 
Thank you, guys. I won't be long. Uh, as you know, Covington County is part of uh, the statewide initiative, um, the Al Pals, <coughs> Alabama uh, People Against the Littered State. And every October, I mean, every April, uh, they put out a, an initiative, uh, Don't Drop It on Alabama. And um, we at the, at the county level have partnered with um, the LBW College. We partnered with the Op City Chamber of Commerce and Lucia City Chamber of Commerce, the uh, 4-H group, as well as the Sheriff's Office. Um, several of us have kind of partnered together. We've, we've just kind of been putting it out there to the public that we were, during the month of April, in the past, we have tried to get together and done like the a real big pickup day, like on Earth Day, which this month is is uh, April twenty second, and we've we've gotten some um, some help here and there, but we found that uh, the businesses and the different corporations and different facilities and different people that are interested in doing this kind of want to try to maybe do it on their own time schedule rather than just trying to send employees or, or students or whatever on this one specific day. So we've changed it up a little bit this year. And um, going along with what the sheriff was talking about, with, with what him and the inmates and the, the county workers or the employees of the county jail are doing has really made a huge impact in a lot of the state highways, the county roads that we, that we travel on a regular basis. But there are still places that just are just, for lack of a better word, they're just trashy. And so um, some of the businesses and some of the different places in the county have kind of said, well, we'll go take care of that area on this day. We'll go take care of that area. So we're letting them kind of establish their own time to take their employees and go and do that. And with that, we're going to be, uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the month, we're going to be giving out a collector of the Trash Collector of the Year Award. Uh, and we'll be doing that. And that'll be kind of like an honorary thing that that business will be able to hold on to for the year. And the, you know, there's a little plaque that comes with a little small little trophy that go with. They can display it in their business or display it in their in their facility somewhere. And it's kind of a a little bit of a, a bragging rights, more or less. And so what we're asking each business to do is to take pictures, gather up as much trash in whatever area and as many times as you want. It doesn't have to be on a specific day, but just kind of go through and, and pick up as much as you want. Take some pictures, then report back to us so that we can then establish it and send it into the state level. Um, and whoever whoever generates the most uh, bags of garbage and the most um, more or less initiative to do this sort of thing, they'll get that trash collector of the year award and be able to hold on to it. We're also going to do a couple of regional awards, like one over on the op side, one on the Andalusia side, uh, for maybe the the local businesses and local people. We'll, we'll do something like um, you know buy them, being that it is Earth Day, we'll buy them a. A, uh, a plant or plant a tree in their honor or do something along that nature that they can put in their business to display as well to go along with what's going on. Uh, I think it's going to go really well this year. We've had a lot of people on the op side and Andalusia side as well as some folks with the county that have come pick up trash bags and some different people that are um, wanting to really be part of this initiative this year, this month, this year. And um, we're really going to push it out again a little bit more to the schools towards the end of the month and gives so, us an opportunity. So someone that's interested in participating, like Triple H, for instance, what would they do? They would contact you? Yeah, they would contact me, or if they are a member of the local chamber, okay. they could contact them, and they have bags. They have a little, uh, it's like a small little enrollment form that you just kind of fill out so you can post it on your bulletin boards in your office and say, hey, this is what we're planning on doing. We want everybody that can to participate. You, they're making up their own schedules. We will provide all the bags to, to do the... Um, which is also provided to us by the state. We'll provide all the bags and whatnot for them to use. What about to safety take vests for working on the roadside? If they need safety vests, we have some that they can that they can borrow. Right. But now most companies are, are are doing their own, you know, bright colored T-shirts and sort of things like that. So, but if they do need something like that, we we can provide them plenty of safety vests for that. If somebody just approached you and said, hey, we'd like to participate, don't know where to go, you're going to assign them a mile or whatever? Yeah, or sure. We'll tell area. them plenty of places. there's plenty of places that we yeah. know of. Okay. Uh, Sonny Cravey with the Department of Transportation, he has uh, been very instrumental in letting us know where some places are that need a little attention. So we're um, we're making sure that those places are some of the first on the list okay. to get to get talked about. Commissioners, anybody have comments, questions on this project? We appreciate Frank heading it up for us. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Anybody else on staff have comments? Ron, you?
had enough time at the podium? Okay. Anybody else? Kevin, you got anything the, else? One okay. thing that Tommy did send the other day was where the governor just released, what was it, Tommy, $225 million or something in more ARPA funds for water and sewer projects. Water and sewer projects. We kind of need to look and see what we got to do if there's a way there's <coughs> a grant process or what to at least get our name on the list. Yeah. All right. We will look into that. Uh, commissioners, anything else from y'all? I've got radios on unannounced. Okay. What do you have? I have uh, Zach Dobbins radio this weekend. Uh, it's all day Saturday. They're supposed to be using all three arenas. Um, I believe the starts, he said different arenas start different time, but around 8.30 in the morning is when the start time. Uh, and then the following weekend on April 23rd is our big PRCA rodeo. Um, so everyone will go out and support both of these. Okay. What's the name of Zach Dobbins? I can look at it online. He, just, sir, no, you don't have to do that. he sent it to me Friday. It was the first time okay. I actually got his information, so I'm sorry. I, uh, I look on. I look online. It's okay. Yeah. You have a VIN number. He is. It's called the Easter Extravaganza. Is that on the show website? No, it's not. It will be going on the Facebook page today. But he's just listed as Dobbins Equine, and they're calling it the Easter extravaganza he said there'll actually be other things too egg toss you know like things for the kids just different events throughout the day all right miss turner do you have anything i do not commissioners anything else no sir if not a motion to adjourn would be in order <laughs>